Hi, this is Bill Spatrino. Today is December 30th, 2018. Uh, this is a special report of the Truth Machine. Uh, it got very frustrating when I found out on Wednesday that the suspect who shot and killed the California officer was in the country illegally, according to the sheriff. Um, the person who was suspected to shot, shoot, and kill a police officer during a traffic stop in Newman, California, was in the country illegally. They'd been speculating it. Uh, they pulled over the suspect, 33-year-old Ronald Singh, and a few moments later called out, shot fired over the radio. Uh, multiple agencies responded to assist, and he was found at the scene with gunshot wounds. Uh, you know, they identified the suspect. They didn't release his name, but they did say he was in illegally. Folks, this is setting up that what we talked about. And last week, Brian Colfidge, a great patriot um, that got the border wall. He's the triple amputee that got the border wall. Um, GoFundMe account going. He brought attention to this. And then... You know, our president last week vetoed the spending bill and said he needs a wall. I mean, enough is enough, okay? It, this is just, we're to a point now where this can't be tolerated anymore, okay? It's, it's, it's not something that we, that we want or that we're going to have. And, you know, our president has said basically that, He's talking about closing the southern border. He's talking about cutting out aid and cutting out trade with Mexico. Okay. It's this this is what has to be done. See, what happened in it, and we're gonna explain what happened in the stock market, because a lot of people don't realize what happened and what they tried to do. Our president, they've tried to put a lot of pressure on him. They had Jay Paul, the Fed chief raising the interest rates. And not only did he raise them, but he didn't talk about being data dependent and making the interest rates. Like the stock market, which I'm a, a person who follows, counted on him to say we are going to raise rates or not raise them at all. A great investor named Stan Druckenmiller came out and said it shouldn't be done. Jeff Gunlock said it shouldn't be done. Jim Cramer, who I don't always agree with, but knows finances, said it shouldn't be done. A bunch of billionaires said it, but he didn't want to listen. And that they did that to Trump. Mattis resigns to try to pressure Trump. China attacks her stock market with the deep state. Mueller keeps trying to put pressure on Corsi and Roger Stone trying to get them to flip on Trump. Our president has done a great job while taking a lot of abuse in the uh, and, and the stock market going down. And they keep putting pressure on him because he was praising the stock market. And then he brought in Steven Mnuchin this weekend to get the uh, stock market stabilized. And they came in, I, t I talked about it the other day, I made a mistake, I called it the surge protection. It's the plunge protection team. And I didn't explain it so good. And I, I, a lot of people have written into me and said, Billy, the stock stabilized this week. You know, you were right on that the other day. Can you explain it in greater detail to me? And I'm, I'm explaining how the politics and the investing all goes hand in hand. See, what, what's happened is they know the, the trade war between China and the United States, China, the deep state, and investors like George Soros want Donald Trump out of office. They want it, and what they did is they tried to trap him. They tried to, and this is all my speculation, but, uh, and by the way, I want to interrupt. Thank you to everybody who subscribed and liked this where our subscriber base is over 180 now. Once we get to 1,000, YouTube will start showing us and giving us respect that the conservatives don't normally get. But um, I, I'm going to walk you through everything that happened in a timeline, and it, it, it'll tie in 
but it's very, it took me a long time to put it all together because I couldn't understand it all. And when you're watching it, you don't really understand. But I, it all clicked the other day for me. What's happened all month is these people all want Donald Trump out because, see, Ruth Ginsburg is very ill. Okay, I got another report from someone else that listened to our, our last episode and told me that they had a source that Ginsburg has less than a year left to live. And she's barely, she's barely surviving. And they also told me that that's part of the reason that the deep state is trying to push out our president. They want him to fold up, along with China negotiating with our stock market, trying to push our stock market down, along with the deep state, trying to, the Fed, this whole thing with Mattis, the government shutdown, they're trying to put pressure on Trump. Trump is the master negotiator, and he's looking out for us. And they kept trying to put pressure. The stock market had its worst month ever, okay? And it's not warranted. They keep saying recession. They got everybody splitting the recession word uh, all around the thing, uh, all around the media, Washington. And folks, I've been an investor for 35 years. I've been a successful investor. I went broke twice and then turned myself into a decamillionaire. I've compounded my money at 27%. Those of you who listen to the dividend machine, you know, I've got tens of thousands of subscribers worldwide. And if you're a subscriber to that, please become a subscriber on the truth machine. Um, what's happened is the stocks have had their worst month of the year. And what's I couldn't understand what was happening because this was illogical. And then it came to my attention through a couple other people that don't that want to remain nameless that the Chinese were attacking our stock market and shorting it and bringing it down. They tried to do it in 2009, but we had this what's called the plunge protection team. How does this work? The plunge protection team is a group of the Wall Street, the biggest banks in the in the in, in the world are in the United States. You got you know, banks like J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, um, the, the six biggest ones are J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley. They probably have, they have trillions of dollars of, of deposits. And what they do is they have trading desks that trade the markets. And now we did have, they attacked him in December because they know the government shutdowns heading. They know that the Fed's going to raise rates. They know that when you're weak, like there's end of the year tax selling that goes on at the end of the year. So you're not able to, like there's a strong bias. It's like flying a kite when it's extra windy. It's going to be, if it's windy, it's going to fly good anyhow. But when it's really strong, it gets really bad. Okay. And what they did is they wanted to pressure our president and get him flustered. And what their, their plan was to get him to, to, that he'd be so stressed out that he would, he, they would threaten him with a budget and, and he, they would tell him, look, sign the budget or we're going to do a government shutdown and push the market down even further. He said, no, thanks to Brian Colfidge. I, I mean, I don't think he, Trump was ever going to do it, but he didn't show his hand. And then all of a sudden he said he's not signing. And I think the guys with the wall helped. And I don't think Trump was going to do it at all, but he, he knew they were trying to trap him. Stock market took a bath last Wednesday, last Thursday, last Friday. And then over the weekend, there was a report that Steven Mnuchin got this plunge protection team in gear. Now, what is the plunge protection team? People have asked me, it's like, it's hard to explain the specifics of it, okay? What I can explain is there's a group of people that have a lot of money that can trade the markets. And they were supposedly came in in 2009. Okay, this isn't documented stuff. They're not, when they asked Mnuchin what he talked about, he wouldn't, he wouldn't explain it. And then I think he wanted to just mention it so that he would scare the markets into the markets going up. On Monday, the market dropped 600 points in a half day. And I mean, 
I got to the lowest point that I'd been at in probably two or three years. That's how far my 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 stocks went down. And I was a little flustered. I, I just I couldn't understand the exact specifics. But then Tuesday night, the futures came. The market was down almost 300 points. And then all of a sudden, Tuesday, the market just turned around and went up a thousand points. Then Wednesday, or um, I was on Wednesday session. Thursday, market's down 600 points. All of a sudden, market closes plus 260, 860 point move. Friday, I was talking to a good friend of mine, Dave and Kirsten in Louisiana. And I said, watch this. And it's funny because yesterday there was a person who has been telling me that Apple's going to go way down. And by the way, it's up almost 10 points from when we recommended it. Um, he said the market was going to go way down. And Apple, he was like basically chiding me at 2 o'clock on Thursday when the market was down 600. Apple moved up 7 points when the market moved up 800 points in 2 hours. That's phenomenal. After it had gone up 1,000 the day before. Today, same thing. Market down. Then all of a sudden, it turns around. I, I kept telling them, the money's coming in. The money's coming in. The money's coming in. And the market would get down about 80, 90 points, and it would shoot up. It did it five or six times today, uh, on Friday. This, what this is, is this is a team that we have to stabilize the market. They're buying the bargains, okay? How do they do it? I don't know the specifics. And if I did, it would take me too long to explain it. I just know now that the government, that, that Donald Trump, again, outsmarted the deep state. You're not going to read this, but I believe between the officer getting murdered in California, the him pushing the southern wall, a border wall and the GoFundMe account, they're going to get, we're going to win this, folks, okay? We are going to get a wall built. It's going to happen because he's just not going to open the government. It's just not going to happen. They know he's serious now. And the deep state are realizing in China, they can't, China came out today and said they opened their markets up so they, they're importing rice now. I talked to a good client today. Actually, I talked to one client, then I talked to another. They both told me they have connections in China. President Xi is he's losing it, okay? They're, the people there are very, very unhappy with him. And he knows they've been the, his, his inner circle of people have been pressuring him to make a deal. See, folks, he's a thug. He's not an intelligent guy like our president that went to the Wharton School of Business. He's a thug. And I know some of my Chinese friends don't like to hear that. Too bad. This is the truth channel. This isn't BS. This isn't CNN. This isn't even Fox News. Because you don't, Shepard Smith and Judge Napolitano are disgust me. Okay? They completely disgust me. But I'm letting you all know the stock market, the end of the year tax selling is ending. The fear that was going on in the stock market is over, okay? I really believe, I don't like to call bottoms in the market, but I think Monday, I said it in the last uh, episode, and I'm saying it again, I think we have a low, okay? We got to a bottom. Uh, the last thing we're going to talk about is some of the bowl games. Uh, a couple of you people have asked me about it. The Liberty Bowl Oklahoma State's going to be playing without Justice Hill. And all this is for news matter only. I'm not advocating anybody bet the game. I'm just giving you, I mean, I know there's people that are going to do that. It's not, we're not advocating that here, okay? I'm just going to give you my basic uh, insights on the game. Missouri's playing Oklahoma State. I, Oklahoma State's going to have, not going to have Justice Hill. He's decided to skip the bowl game. It, this is going to be a Big 12 shootout. Okay, and I just, I, I think the game's going to be well over the 72 and a half points. Uh, I think that Missouri wins this game. Drew Locke produces a, a, a victory for him. I think it's going to be probably like a 40 to 34 game or something like that. Northwestern is playing Utah. These coaches, Pat Fitzgerald and Kyle Whittingham, 
in the Holiday Bowl. They're great coaches. I'd like to see how the Northwestern quarterback Clayton Thorson attacks the Utah defense led by Chase Hansen. I Their offense has been inconsistent, but I think they win. Uh, they win a very close game, but I think they win. Uh, the Gator Bowl, North Carolina State, Texas A&M. I like the quarterback matchups with Ryan Finley and Kellen Mond. And this is a chance for Jimbo Fisher, the A&M coach, to win nine games in his first season. You know, both teams are hot at the end of the year. Um, Texas A&M was 6-1 and one against the spread as a favorite. And I think that they should win by more than seven points. The Outback Bowl is Mississippi State and Iowa. Uh, the Bulldogs are favored by five. Joe Moorhead knows the Iowa scheme because he was with Penn State. Um, both teams have good defensive line. Mississippi State's got Montez Sweet and Iowa's got A.J. Pensia. I, I think it's going to be a defensive game. I think that Mississippi State wins barely. Uh, the Fiesta Bowl, LSU and UCF, uh, UCF, the Knights have a 25-game winning streak, even though they're the underdogs in the game. Daryl Mack played well in the AAC Championship. Can he do it against LSU? I think LSU, led by Joe Burrow, will take this game. The Rose Bowl game, Washington and Ohio State. You guys know I'm a Buckeye fan. This is Urban Meyer's last game. Should be very emotional. And I think that Dwayne Haskins is a quarterback that I don't think the Huskies are ready for. Uh, the Ohio State defense isn't that good. But I think the Buckeyes, I think they win a game by at least 10 points, if not more. And the last game, the Sugar Bowl. Georgia's playing Texas. Georgia should be in the playoffs, in my opinion. And you Bulldog friends of mine, uh, Danny, Dave, Jay, you guys all know that the, Buc the, the Bulldogs should be in the playoffs. Um, Tom Herman's a good coach. He's a former Buckeye uh, with the Longhorns. But I just don't think, I think Georgia overwhelms them. Uh, I think the point spread is 13. I if George, I, I, Georgia could blow these guys out by 20 points, in my opinion. So this is another episode. Please subscribe and like again and, and send this to as many people as you can. It's very important to us here at the Truth Channel. I want to wish everybody a happy new year. And behind the uh, wheel of the Truth Channel, this is Bill Spatrino asking you to sit back and enjoy the ride.